In this episode of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory, we'll look at the Gemini region and show you how to find these beautiful deep sky objects. The Monkey Head Nebula. The Jellyfish Nebula. And the interesting planetary, the Eskimo Nebula. All right, let's go star hopping. Hey, hello, hi, and welcome to episode 43 of Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory. I'm Dave Hearn, and I'm very privileged to be your host. In this series of programs, we'll show you the most beautiful sights in the night sky and explain exactly how to find them with your binoculars or your telescope. The area of sky between the Club of Orion and the foot of Gemini is very interesting indeed. Since the winter Milky Way runs right through this area, it's loaded with clusters and nebula. A camera with a wide angle lens pointed at this area can catch multiple objects in one frame. Two of our targets this week lie in this area, and both of these nebulae are very photogenic representing creatures of the land and the ocean. We'll visit the nebula representing our land-dwelling ancestor right after this message. Kissimmee Park Observatory would like to thank our wonderful supporters on Patreon. Your contributions will allow us to create and provide more quality astronomy content. We appreciate your generosity and support. Hopping target number one. NGC 2174 is better known as the Monkey Head Nebula. This is a large and fairly bright area of nebulosity located within the boundaries of the constellation of Orion. It lies right below the club held in Orion's raised left arm. The nebula covers an area larger than the full moon, measuring 30 minutes by 40 minutes of arc. The nebula is also associated with an open cluster NGC 2175, so it's very photogenic. To locate the monkey head, we'll start out at the orange beacon Betelgeuse, which is Alpha Orionis, blasting at magnitude 0.6. Make sure you have your low power wide field eyepiece in your scope for this monkey head. <laughs> From Betelgeuse, move two and a half degrees left to the fourth magnitude star Mu Orionis. Next, move the same direction about five degrees to fourth magnitude Xi Orionis. Now move about seven degrees to the upper left to fourth magnitude Chi 2 Orionis. Now move about a degree and a half to the lower left and the glow of the monkey head nebula will appear in your eyepiece. Situated about 6,400 light years from Earth, this large nebula is bright enough to be seen in your binoculars. The Hubble Space Telescope has recently been examining this area of nebulosity, which is a well-known birthplace of stars. We'll check out another interesting nebula that depicts a floating sea creature right after this break. Star hopping target number two. The Jellyfish Nebula, listed in the index catalog at entry 443, is a galactic supernova remnant, positioned at the foot of the constellation of Gemini. This is another very large nebula, spanning 50 minutes of arc across. Light from the supernova explosion that created the nebula first reached Earth over 30,000 years ago. To locate IC 443, we'll be starting at the third magnitude star, Propus, also known as Eta Geminorium, found about two degrees to the left of the Monkey Head Nebula that we just located. This is a quick one. From Propus, just move three quarters of a degree to the lower left and you'll run into the nebulosity that is the Jellyfish Nebula. Like its cousin, the Crab Nebula Supernova Remnant, IC443 contains a neutron star, the remnant of the collapsed stellar core. The entire supernova remnant structure spans about 300 light years and lies approximately 5,000 light years away. Next on this week's episode of Star Hopping, we'll check out a popular planetary nebula also in Gemini. We'll find it with a little difficulty right after this quick break. Star 
Qatar hopping target number three. The Eskimo Nebula, NGC 2392, is a very well-known planetary nebula characterized by its fuzzy halo around the central gas bubble, which suggests a face within a parka. The nebula is definitely a challenge object, glowing at ninth magnitude, and it's also very small, spanning less than one minute of arc. For targets like these, you'll need a larger scope, which gives you the ability to use magnifications of 200x or more and still have a bright enough image. So we'll locate the little blue ball that is the planetary, and then you'll need to pop in your high power eyepiece to see the structure of the nebula. Also a light pollution filter such as an oxygen three filter really helps to bring out the planetary structure. So we'll start from the brilliant first magnitude star Pollux, which can be found four degrees to the lower right of equally bright Castor. From Pollux, move about eight degrees to the upper right to find third magnitude Wasat. What's that? Wasat. <laughs> so here's my trick that I've always used to find the Eskimo. Wasat forms the base of an upside down cross with the head of the cross being fifth magnitude 61 Geminorium. The horizontal bar of the cross is formed between the two fifth magnitude stars, 56 Geminorium on the right and 63 Geminorium on the left. If you draw an imaginary line between 61 and 63, then move to a point between them and about a half a degree down, you'll spy a fat bluish star. That should be the Eskimo. Now pop in your high power eyepiece and see if the fat star becomes a larger circle. If not, retrace your steps. This can be a difficult object to locate. Using your nebula filter, see if you can see the fuzzy parka around the central structure of the nebula. This object is a challenge, but it's exciting to see that little blue star resolve into a round ball with your high power eyepiece. NGC 2392 lies around 2,870 light years away from Earth. So Gemini is an excellent area of the sky for deep sky objects. Nearby tonight's targets, you can also find Messier 35, the excellent open cluster. We saw that one in episode nine of Star Hopping, which can be found on our site at kpobservatory.org forward slash sh009. So let's review. We started out chasing down the Monkey Head Nebula, NGC 2174, just across the border in Orion's Club. Then we located the slimy jellyfish nebula, IC443, near the bright star Propus in Gemini. Then we moved toward the other end of the constellation and had fun with our challenge object for this week, the famous planetary nebula known as the Eskimo Nebula. So that does it for this week's episode. You can find the show notes on our website at kpobservatory.org forward slash sh043, where you can comment and leave any questions that you may have. You can also contact me personally on Twitter at StarHoppingMan, where I'd love to help you with any astronomy or observing questions. So feel free to reach out with your questions. I'm here to help. Well, thank you very much for joining me here, and I'll see you next week with more star hopping tips and tricks. I'm Cassie, and I hope you've enjoyed star hopping around the Milky Way. We'll continue to bring you these video astronomy tutorials in the associated podcast every other week on Thursdays. They'll be designed to help you find deep sky objects that are up in the sky at the time we post them on the internet. The reason we create these videos and podcasts is to help beginning amateur astronomers learn the sky and get more enjoyment out of their telescopes and astronomy in general. If you have any requests for potential targets in the night sky that you would like to see us discuss, just let us know down in the comments section below, or on our website blog. Don't miss our free field notes for this episode, basically the script of the show, with all the images and start charts we use for our star hopping activities, you can get them for free, at kpobservatory.org slash field notes. If this is the first time you're checking out Star Hopping, and if you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to our channel by clicking the big yellow button, click the thumbs up on the video, and please share this tutorial out to your friends who like looking at stars. Also, as I just mentioned, please feel free to leave any question or comment below, and we'll be sure to respond quickly. Please follow KPO on Facebook, where we post all of our astronomical digital images, and keep everyone informed about upcoming astronomical events. We'd love to hear from you to discuss all this great stuff up in the sky. All the links to these places in cyberspace including our website, kpobservatory.org, can be found below in the episode notes as well. 
And finally, if you feel this video provides you value, and if you'd like to see more, please consider supporting us on Patreon, where for a small amount per video, you can support our efforts, and help us make even more great astronomy tutorials, just like this one. So bye for now, and thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Star Hopping with Kissimmee Park Observatory.